We also watched AEW Collision, also October 7th, 2023. Rapid Fire Promos. Brian Danielson notes he has been wrestling longer than Kyle Fletcher has been alive. Kyle Fletcher calls this the biggest opportunity of his life. Ricky Starks and Big Bill vow to win the tag titles. Eddie Kingston threatens straight pain for Commander. FDR acknowledges that Cash Wheeler is a fractured rib, but they are still defending the tag team titles. So it's FTR versus Ricky Starks and big-ass Bill Morrissey. And the first thing they do is Cash gets up there with his obviously taped up bad rib, and they knock him off the apron under the guardrail to start the match to, to beat the hell out of, of uh, uh, Dax. And they're beating him, and they're beating him, and they stop to choke slam Cash and his bad rib through the table. Dax is in there with his shoulder all taped up, trying to fight with one arm against two guys. This reminded me... Well, I mean, I'll just cut to the end. Bill hits a bunch of choke slams, and Sean Spears... Uh, Sean's, uh, 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 Ricky Starks spears him and uh, gets the pin and we have new tag team champions. And this reminded me of the Heart Foundation beating the Dyna uh, Dynamite Kid and British Bulldog for the titles when Dynamite Kid had a bad back and could, literally could not walk. Okay. Uh, somebody else pointed out Andre the Giant and Haku being demolition, just squashing the champs winning the belts. Whatever. Ricky Starks and Big Ass Bill Morrissey have been had a couple of fun matches, but didn't have a ton of credibility. So if we're going to get a credibility in one night, we're going to have them actually absolutely demolish, manhandle, and dominate the tag team champions. Like, kayfabe, this is the biggest win a team has had maybe in the history of AEW. They just slaughtered these guys who have been the best tag team, one of the best tag teams in the world for years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ricky Starks and Big Ass Bill Morrissey are new tag team champions. Do well, you call cash. that a squash. You called it a squash, and I could not agree more. I, I, you could have hit me with a live flounder, and I wouldn't have been less. Surprised. I would love to, just for the look on your face. <laughs> I, I was shocked when they were they won the titles. Well, shocked. Cash is hurt, and uh, they kept him out of the match. Although, apparently, the the story is that he is a a rib injury, but uh, man, he had no problem taking that choke slam through that table. That's another one. It's like Seth. I got a broken back. Let's take a backdrop on cement. I'm Cash Wheeler. My rib is cracked, or whatever the story is. I'm going to take a choke slam through a table. And boy, did that look like it sucked. So they got him out of there, and then they, yeah, they destroyed FTR. And, uh, you know, the match was just a, a total squash match. But, my God, that promo that FTR cut, I heard nothing. I heard so much about that promo from so many people today. Like, God, could you have had a bigger boo-boo face promo than that? I mean, God, it was like they were at a funeral. They were just so depressed. And uh, I, I just, like, I mean, I knew the finish. I, I want to know what I would have thought if I would have seen that without having, if, like, if I were watching it live, if I would have had the same thought. But, man, God, they were just, like, telling you, we're about to lose on the TV show because one of us is legitimately injured. And that's what happened. <laughs> now, do you know if Cash and or Seth are taking time off? I have no idea. Seth is, and he's had a broken back for years. Cash, I'm sure, has to take time off. That's why they dropped the titles. Gotcha. But I don't know how long it'll be. So they show Powerhouse Hobbs and company laying out Kenny Omega on Dynamite. But they are not leaving AEW. I should throw that out there, because people were talking about that all day today. Are because you Dax, well, Dax trademarked CMFTR. So people were like, oh, you know, maybe they're going to, this is them. They're not leaving. There's an injury. And that's why this happened. They show Powerhouse Hobbs and company laying out Kenny Omega on Dynamite. And it would be Hobbs versus Chris Jericho on Title Tuesday. Brian Danielson versus Kyle Fletcher. Oh. So I was, I had a little mini rant here about how watching Brian Danielson wrestle was just sublime. And it makes all the stuff look so easy. Uh, and, and everything is so smooth and so slick. And... It's not like the blow athleticism of you'll see of, a, of an Omega, for example, or Ray Phoenix, or whatever. But it, like everything he does is just so so awesome. But it's not necessarily spectacular. At that exact moment, Kyle Fletcher did a suicide dive that is so called because he very nearly lost his life as his back was scorpioned in midair. He went forehead first into the barricade. It was terrifying, and that was not nearly the scariest thing on this show. He survived. He had control after the break. And uh, Danielson goes back. They're going back and forth. There's a the, the, the a brain buster by Fletcher. Danielson gets an ankle lock and a German suplexes. Fletcher gets a Michinoku driver into a dragon sleeper. And as if that is not enough, they're fighting on the top rope. And Fletcher does a reverse superplex 
which he rolls through into a dragon sleeper. I lost my mind at that point, but they were not done mm -hmm. because Danielson kept on rolling through the dragon sleeper into a cradle and won the match. Holy crap, that Not was awesome. a cradle and a European clutch. It was Zack Sabre Jr.'s finish. Oh, God, that was great. Because they are continuing this feud. So I don't think we're going to wait till Forbidden Door. It seems like they're they're rapidly approaching well, the for second Zach, match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine with that. Yes. So, yeah, for, for, for Kyle Fletcher, this is like the, one of the best matches you have in your entire career. For Brian Danielson, it's Saturday. Yeah. I, I heard uh, the... Aussie Open on Jericho's podcast a while back and and making note that this Kyle Fletcher kid knows what he's doing. And I've been watching him in the last few weeks and God, this kid's good. And he's 24, they said? Yep. He is he's, good, but I'm afraid he's going to kill himself. Well, there's that. Because but, that, that tope into the guardrail, dude. That was bad. I mean, sometimes you see a spot and it's like something goes wrong, but you can see a way where it wouldn't have gone wrong. And that was not evident here. <laughs> like, there literally was nothing that could have saved him from almost dying on that spot. He, the problem is, and I, I see this as a problem in general, he's a tall man. Sure. And so, uh, you know, he went running as fast as he could because he was excited in this match. And he fucking flew like a missile. And, you know, Brian did everything he could. This is not like it's a Miz. This was Brian Danielson who actually will catch you. Like, he sure. tried. But, like, this guy hit the thing that if they would have had those old school guardrails, his head would have went through the guardrail. He would have been trapped. He would have been stuck. They would have had to cut off one of the rails to get his head out of there. But he lived and continued on. But I mean, he needs to be careful. I, I, I can see this kid being Will Ospreay level in the next few years. Seriously. Well, he's working with him, so. There is that. Have a chance to study firsthand. So, afterwards, it's thing very confusing. Brian Danielson is attacked by the Gates of Agony. And Wheeler and Claudio save, and I guess this sets up a tag match on, I think, Rampage, the announced later in the show. But what a random post-match attack that was. Well, he's wrestling Swerve on Tuesday, so. I, are they the mogul? I see. Okay. They're, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Tony Schiavone interviews Absolute Ricky Starks and Big Bill, or as I, I like to call them, Absolutely Big they announced they have whipped the best team in the world's ass. They look like stars. They act like stars. It's about time this tag team division was represented by real stars. I can't believe they didn't say they wrestled like stars. Well. In storyline, that's the whole key. Well, they didn't say they whipped the best tag team in the world's ass. That's true. Yeah. Starks vows there will be no rematch for FDR. They're the ones everyone wants. The faces of collision. The new top dogs around here. Juice Robinson and the Guns versus Angelico and Gravity and Metal League. Austin Gunn was so awesome this match. <laughs> My new favorite thing is Austin Gunn wrestling luchadors and mocking all of their taunts and mannerisms. It was great with Penta. It was great with Gravity. And uh, then they actually start to wrestling. And his wrestling is also quite great. So, and Helico gets a hot tag. Juice, in particular, feeding his comeback is a treasure. Because mm -hmm. Juice is on the apron, but trying to like throw clotheslines and stuff. And then Helico ducks... And then Angelico throws a clothesline and Juice ducks. And Angelico tries a spin kick, like a, a leg sweep, and Juice jumps. And then Juice laughs, ha ha! And then Angelico just boots him right in the head. <laughs> Angelico then ties up both guns and submission holes like he's Mr. Fantastic, but that leaves him exposed to the left hand of God from Juice. Uh, Gravity slips in a springboard. Metal League tries a diving run and spikes himself in the back of his own head. And before anyone else could die, the guns hit a 310 to Yuma, and Juice hit his uh, front DDT thing. Is that the pulp friction? Yeah. Bro, are we are we uh, bearing the lead here? This goddamn Metallic almost died twice. Which yeah, I was gonna say. Which in, time? in far worse. I mean, God, that Kyle Fletcher thing was scary, but it was nothing, nothing compared to the bump that Metallic first took on Arana, and then that fucking Juice Robinson finish that he took. <laughs> I watched that countless times, trying to figure out. How did he not die? And I don't know. Uh, it's basically like taking a DDT, except, like, he took it on his face. <laughs> like, he landed in a headstand, but not on top of his head, which would be bad enough, but on his face, which is a great way to break your neck. Sure. And then, like... He's on his face, and his body starts going one direction, 
But then he somehow tucks his head after landing on his face and falls on his neck again. He fell on his neck twice in one move. Dude, if you did not see this, go home and watch it, Vinny. It's at a 54-minute mark. Watch that finish. And you come on here and tell me, how in the fuck is this guy not dead? Find this right see now, if you can find it right now. I'll look it up. That was the craziest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Speaking of you yelling, burying the lead, can we stop with this gravity moonwalk thing? <laughs> no, it's really, his gimmick no, is it's, gravity. It's stupid. Move on. It's so dumb. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not 12 anymore. I'm not watching Hulk Hogan. Okay, stop it. Are you telling me he's not actually walking on the moon? That's what I'm trying to tell you, Vinny. I'm not buying it. Well, I'm not finding it in the five second Twitter. Search. Find it. I'll, I'll look for it more. <laughs> it's not on Twitter. I looked yesterday. <laughs> I tried to show somebody. Can okay. you see this computer? Yeah. You can. Yeah. All right. Well, you load it up. Keep going. I'm gonna right. find it. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.